working within that within that space. So today's session will be very intuitive and interactive. And so I had requested that you would um, hopefully be able to join with your computer just because we're going to have an opportunity to go through um, a practical exercise as we go through the session. Okay. So let's kind of look at our overview of some of the key things that we will be covering and uh, talking about today. So we have a bit of a busy uh, schedule and we're going to look at four key areas. The first one is talking about um, research. Um, the second one is going to be preparing your key documents. The third one will be looking at launching and starting your job search. And then the fourth one is review, looking at improving the process. So I will be walking us through some of the key aspects for the research section. So research, why, um, oops. so in terms of some of the key things that we will be talking about today, we are going to be looking at, um, in order for you to have a really great job search strategy, you're going to be noticing that there are a number of things you need to think about before you actually start the job search. And that will help reduce your frustration. So the reason why we mentioned that, we're, it's very important for you to take time to research a number of key things, uh, research the possible um, industries, keywords, job roles, and then the actual keywords that you would be needing for your job search to be successful. That will help you understand what your current state is, help you then determine what your overall target you're looking to achieve, and then do a gap analysis between where you are and where you want to go. Um, and in order to do that, that will then help you um, identify what possible industries or working environments that you will be working in so that you can kind of set yourself up for success. You want to, having looked at possible roles, identify what industries would be good targets for you to go into. And then we're going to talk about preparation, getting all your documents together, and then actually starting your job search and then reviewing the process. So what you'll notice is there's a lot of work you should be doing before you actually even start the job search. So when you talk about research, what are some of the key things you will need to research? You would need to research things in terms of roles. What are the possible roles that are here in Canada? You have experience from back home. And that experience is valid, and it's experience that you can leverage and you should leverage. But what's going to happen is you might see that the type of roles and job titles that you had back home would be very different from the ones that are here. So you need to do some analysis about um, which ones would kind of work for you and then which ones you can translate and transfer your skills into and then it's really going to be um, important that um, you really just kind of keep track of what the types of roles are. The other thing to research is industries. What are the different sectors that are here in Canada and in North America? How are they thriving? And then what type of roles um, would fit into those industries? And then thirdly, the keywords. So when we talk about keywords, we're going to define it as going to be the language that's used for the roles and the industries that you are researching and that you're potentially looking to move into. Um, those keywords are going to be the key that will unlock opportunities in those roles that you're looking for. So it's very, very critical that that's done. So how on earth can you identify rules? What are some things you need to consider? 
I'll first start from the bottom right to the second left and then the top right. So the bottom right, you want to consider things in terms of what are your interests? What are you really good at? What are your strengths? What do you do very easily? These are things that your friends, your colleagues say you do really well. It could be that you're a really great communicator. It could be that you're a really strong um, leader. Or it could be that you're really great with graphics and you enjoy that, right? So what are your strengths and your interests? And then what are you also passionate about? And then what are you good at? That's a really great starting off point. Why? You need to do some self-reflection to really think about what is um, your value add that you could bring and that you could lead with when it comes to um, interviews and jobs and stuff like that. The second thing you want to do when it comes to um, trying to identify roles is maybe do some speaking to others. Reach out to your friends. Reach out to network. Try and speak to them about the roles that you're potentially interested in. Ask them questions. What do you do? What do you like? What are you? What is your day-to-day -day like? For example, if you are a healthcare uh, person and you want to maybe move and transition into technology, you want to maybe talk to somebody that works in technology and you want to ask them questions about what's their day-to-day -day like? What's the culture like? What are some of the tools that they use on a day-to-day -day basis? That's very important because you can kind of get an idea of, mm, is this something I want to do or is it something I don't want to do, right? And then also do some research by going on Google and searching for uh, jobs and looking and trying to identify what are some of the key competencies, the responsibilities, as well as the types of technology that they use, right? Very important. So you see that you have a few things to think about. So let's look at industries, right? In Canada, um, there are a number of key industries. And within these key industries, they have different role types. So we'll just quickly look through the Canada and then also we'll look through the um, US. So if we think about what are the top industries, the industries that are generating the most amount of revenue within Canada and the economy and producing and um, providing for the GDP. We have commercial banking. That is the top earning uh, industry. Next, we have gas and petroleum bulk stations, then gas and petroleum wholesaling, and then oil grilling, drilling, and gas extraction and then new car dealers. So the top five are quite a wide range of industries, right? Let's look at the next five and see what are the other industries that are providing a lot of value. Then you have supermarkets, grocery stores. So that's like retail. That's like fast moving consumer goods, right? And then you have insurance, life insurance and annuities. So in insurance uh, policies for families, for um, individuals, and then also for businesses. And then you have property um, causality and direct insurance. So this is in terms of protecting things. So the first one was people, and then the next one is things. And then finally, you have pharmaceuticals, and then hospitals, right? So that means if you're your background is working within any of these 10 industries, then it's great. Definitely, there are going to be other industries as well. Um, and then there are different role types that are within it. But I just wanted you to get a bit of a visual because you want to go where the money is and you want to understand where some of the job opportunities are. So on the flip side, let's look at our neighbor the United States. When we look at their top producing industries by revenue, what we see is it's almost a direct difference, right? So whereas in Canada, hospitals is at the end, 
in the U.S., hospitals, healthcare seems to be in the top 5%, in the top half, right? So we have hospitals, um, then we have drug, cosmetics, and toiletry, wholesaling, and then we move into pharmaceuticals and health and medical insurance. And then we see commercial banking come up, right? A number of things to note, the American market is the population size is is large around 350 million so and then comparing to canada whereby we are about 33 to 38 million you see you see our size is a lot smaller but in terms of the revenue we're generating we're still generating a lot right but in comparison to the us you can see there are still some opportunities there and then the Looking at the last five in the U.S., new car dealers, life insurance, public schools pop up, then retirement and pension plans. They have an age, a large aging population, so retirement and pension plans is big. And then finally, we have gasoline and petroleum, right? So that gives you a little bit of a picture. So let's now look at how do you identify industries, right? Um, you want to think about what industry are you in currently? What was your past experience in? Um, and then think about your industry that you worked in. Are there still opportunities in it? Is it one of the top 10? Is there opportunities? What are some of the trends going on in that, um, in that industry? And then what I would advise is from your research about the industries, try and pick maybe three that are a little bit similar to what you've done or that are interesting to you and that you would like to learn a little bit more about and you would be excited to work in in the next five to ten years, right? And then also think about the type of industry that you would like to move into after you've looked at your top three. What would it look like in the next five and ten years? What are the trends that are happening um, what are some of the technology or tools they use? What would you need to do in order to upscale to be successful within those industries? We I stop sharing. Sorry about that. Um, let me try. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, can hear you. You're able to hear me, okay. Mm -hmm. um, let me. Okay, let me do the a yellow new chat. New share. Not sure why. Okay, I feel like my monitor has acted up just well me... isn't this the day for technical glitches it's okay We're, we'll get there just give me one second i usually have another monitor i'll stop share okay it's not good okay, okay. just a sec you want me to just share mine um uh, just one second i'm just Put it in. Um, okay, good. Screen two. Okay. Thank you for your patience. Please let me know if you can see my screen. Yes. Okay, awesome. So now let's look very quickly at um keyword research and keywords. Um, how can you look them up and why are they important? For your jobs roles that you've identified, um, you want to then now understand what are what's the language that they use within that organization, within that industry, within that role. And so you want to break it down into what are the key competencies, the core competencies 
the role and responsibilities and then key documents. Why? Because you need to know whatever role you've decided. Say, for example, I'm a business analyst. I work on business analysis documents and processes. And now I want to transition into a project management role. Project management core competencies are going to be a little bit different, a little bit similar. So I need to now research and find out what are those core competencies, right? Um, so that I can get that language and start getting familiar with it and using it and learning it. Then you also need to know what are they expecting you to do in the, in the job on a day-to-day -day basis. So that's your roles and responsibilities. I feel like it stopped sharing. Let me see. Okay, it's there. Okay, roles and responsibilities. I can still see your screen. Okay, thank you. So roles and responsibilities are what do you do on a day-to-day -day basis, right? And then um, key documents. What are your deliverables? What do you need to create, right? And then you also want to identify what are your key um, documents that you need, right? You need to make sure you get access to a resume that will be formatted in the Canadian format. And then once you start working on that, then you need to also look at examples of people in that role, how maybe they format their LinkedIn. And then you also want to do some research. What's the salary expectations, right? So you can use some sites. So we have Canada, you can use Payscale or Glassdoor. And then in the States, you can also use payscale.com or Levels FYI. So that will help you kind of benchmark and it will help you when it comes to negotiations. And then finally, you want to identify what companies would you want to work in, right? Okay, so I'm now going to hand over to uh, Bookie to take over. All right, thank you so much, um, Katrina, for that session or for taking the section about um, research. So we're going into, can you guys all see my screen, please? Yes, please. Okay. So we're going into the section about preparation. And for this section, we're going to focus on taking your research to start to prepare using tools and assets that you may need for the job search itself. So once Katrina has already mentioned um, doing your resume, updating your resume, coming from a different climate, we should have heard that most of the time the formatting in North America is completely different from what we have back home. Back home, it's more of a CV, a curriculum vitae, while here they use resumes more in terms of focusing on your core skills that align with the jobs you're applying for. So in, your, in this process, you update your resume, try and get feedback from your friends or people that you know who are in that role or similar roles or in that industry you know, just to help serve as a guideline for you to be sure that you're doing, you're on the right path. And once your resume is ready, it's always very good to update your LinkedIn. Now, LinkedIn in the US is like one of the number one place where people get jobs right now, because a lot of recruiters I've spoken to, they will tell you that they spend 95% of, because all they do all day is searching for uh, candidates that fit those roles. So they, send, they spend 95% of their working day on LinkedIn and the remaining 5% they distributed across other job boards. I was like, really? I was quite surprised to hear that. And I've heard that from multiple recruiters. So having your LinkedIn in top shape is really key. And we're going to have a session. I think next weekend is a session that is going to deal with resumes. It's going to focus on resumes. And the week after that, in two weeks, we'll have a session that focuses on LinkedIn and optimizing your LinkedIn. But 
there's no harm right now in starting to prep your LinkedIn, looking at people who are in similar roles, profiles of people who are in similar roles as those you want to apply, uh, of those jobs you want to apply to and start, you know, making changes to your LinkedIn in line with that. And so once we're done with, you're done with at least, they're like your key go-to-market, you know, things, your resume, your LinkedIn, then you start focusing on interview prep. Now, in the whole process of research, you're going to come across so much information about the companies you want to apply to, about the roles you want to apply to. There's a lot of information that is being deposited within you as you're doing your research. Now, once it comes to interview prep, those things will still kind of fall into place. Preparing for interviews, you one resource I found very helpful is YouTube in terms of looking at questions, even for companies. There are a lot of people that will go and share their experiences or top questions certain companies or certain roles ask for during the interviews. Those are things to use to start preparing, research what are those common questions that you usually ask. Depending on what industry if you're going into, a lot of times in corporate America, going into IT, consulting tech, they take you through all this um, star behavioral kind of questions and type of things. So prepare, prepare, prepare. You know, over-prepared for an interview. It's best to get into an interview and say, they run out of questions to ask me than for you to not be able to answer questions they ask. So preparation is accountability. Get an accountability partner. The job search process can be overwhelming. It can, it can really take the toll on you. Get someone that you can kind of bounce off ideas of someone that you feel is seasoned, that will understand what you're doing, that can serve as a guideline. And even if it's just a listening ear, you're going through the process, you're searching, sometimes you're tired, you're overwhelmed. At least there's someone that you can just talk to, to just, you know, make you, just encourage you to keep pushing, keep going through and it also helps you, keeps you accountable because sometimes if you're like, sometimes personally, when I want to do something, I tell a couple of my friends, I'm like, oh, I want to do this. I want to start so, 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 and so by so, 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 and so date. I'm not telling them because I want them to know my business, but I'm telling them so that, you know, they can see me and say, hey, Bookie, I thought you said you were going to do this. Have you started? And I can give them a progress report and say, oh, I've gone this far or I've initiated this process or that process. So it also helps you stay on track with the job search. And once preparation is, you know, in full force, you're like 80%, 90%, it's time to launch out there. And in launching, this is a stage that of the job search that is basically reaching out. You know, we've talked about the research, we've talked about preparation this stage, there's a lot of mistakes that job seekers make, which is not tapping into their network, you know. And sometimes we don't think it's necessary, but one thing I've, I've heard this word in terms of networking, networking, networking in corporate America. And at a point I used to think that it was just overrated. But with the years I've spent here, it's truly, truly not overrated. You just never know who is the key to your next job or your next role, you know. So meet people, tell them you're looking for a job, tell them this is what you're looking for. You just never know who they know in what industry. I have had a situation where networking literally got me a job that was six-figure of paying. And it was ne there's no way I'd have known about that job. There's no way I'd have known about it and applied for it. It was straight through a network. So network, network, network is very important. And once all those things are in place, 
some of these things you have to start off before you get to other stages, but some things you can do concurrently. And as you're networking, start applying for jobs. And the, here are some sites in Canada that you can look into to look for jobs. And um, here are some for the United States. There are some that are similar, you can see, but I guess depending on your location, you can put you know, your zip code and all that. And I guess your IP address too will basically automatically filter to that. And once all that is in place, we say always check with your accountability partner. Most of the time it's always good to get an accountability partner. You can have multiple, you're not restricted to one person for real because you can have someone who is in that field or related field to what you're trying to get into, or you can have, even if it's your partner, your friend, your sibling, but if you have someone that is in the field you're trying to get into, let them know the steps you're taking towards, you know, successfully landing a position and everything, and just see how you can lean on them for support as you require in the whole process. And with that, we get into the last phase of that. And um, I'll hand this over to Katrina to just let us know what to do here. Katrina, can you hear me? Yes, please. Just give me one second, please. Okay. Okay. Let me share my screen. Okay. So this is your 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 the step of um, reviewing uh, the work that you've been doing on your job search so far, and this. Uh, is a critical stage where you need to make sure you're being honest with yourself and you are looking at all of the different steps of the process and asking yourself critical questions about um, how well you're doing with the job search. So with this step, with the review, your main focus should be looking at um, your interview responses after you've had interviews, doing an assessment to see how well you were responding. If you notice that, okay, if you're not progressing to the next level, then you might need to look and see if you can have some additional practice with somebody that you know, or people that you know. But then most times what you can do when it comes to your responses is um, just think about what is the way that I can convey this to the hiring manager or to the team? How can I shorten it? How can I remove fillers? How can I make sure that the way that I'm, I'm responding, I'm showing enthusiasm, right? So you need to look at your responses. You need to um, see how to improve it. And then also you want to review the overall approach. Are you doing enough networking, as Vicky mentioned, or not, right? How can you re outreach a little bit better? Can you maybe speak to somebody? Can you maybe volunteer somewhere? Can you maybe look for opportunities to get advice on the process or a step that you notice you're having troubles with, right? And then you want to review the quality of your interviews and your resume and LinkedIn and see um, how you can improve overall. Okay, so we have reached the um, we have reached the end of this part of our presentation. But as I mentioned, um, this is an interactive session. So we're now going to go into the interactive portion of it. So I will just share my screen first. I am sharing, but um, we have a little workbook and activity book 
that we will be working on. And in this activity, what we're going to do is we're going to break you into breakout rooms and we're going to break um, us into uh, a U.S. breakout room and a Canada breakout room. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to share a copy of this workbook and I'm also going to try and load it into WhatsApp so that you have access to it. So I'm just going to do that now. Just want to make sure. I can do that and load it in. Uh, I'll put it in the chart. Okay. Awesome. Okay, you shared it. Okay, yeah. perfect. Thank you so much. Okay, so um, with that link that Bookie has shared, what you're going to do is when you get it, you're going to go on the left hand side to file, and then you're going to click on make a copy. Oh, let me double check. Oh, I think everyone's here. Okay, I think we have to change it. Just give me a second. Copy link. So then, uh, let me do this one. Sure, it looks the same, but... Okay, let's just see. Okay, just go to... Yeah, we don't want it to be edited. So check the second link. So I'm going to first link. So file. So when you use the second link, okay, sorry. So go to make a copy and then you will be able to make a copy and click on the blue make a copy. Otherwise, okay, good. Okay, so um, you should be able to make a copy. So please use the second link in the chat. That one should allow you to just make a copy. because we want everyone to have their copy to work on. Okay, just sharing it again. Okay, so in the breakout room, we'll have this little workbook that we're going to work on. And so if you have your computer, you'll just um, share the screen or you can just work on it yourself. And then as you have questions um, through the session, we'll kind of go through. Okay, guys, wait, we're going to have two breakout rooms, Canada and US. So you will select, you'll click on breakout room and select your room. But just before we go into our breakout rooms, let's do a little brain break activity. Mm -hmm. So we're all talking about career and we're in different careers. Not all of us are doing the career we said we're going to end up in when we're five years old. So let's do a little brain break. Click on your annotate um, button and just quickly share with us what you wanted to be as a 10-year-old that you're not today. Like all the other careers you wanted to be as a child and which may or may not be different from what you're doing right now and just a quick annotation before we break out into our rooms yes so you you, you just go to go the right. yes you can go to the little pencil icon on your zoom controls go ahead Okay, this is interesting. Engineer, lawyer, pharmacist, diplomat, tomato seller, 
Wife, okay. <laughs> Accountant. Okay, that's awesome. Yeah, as 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 kids we had such great and dandy ideas of who we wanted to be when we grew up. And uh, okay, someone wanted to be a coder. Man, the brain was firing. But for as many as were able to realize those childhood dreams, congratulations. For those that went a different path, congratulations. And for those that will yet go a different path, still congratulations. So we will, all the, the breakout rooms are assigned now so we can all... Um, go into our rooms. So if you're in Canada, go into Canada, you're in America, get into the American room. Awesome.